Our regular panelist, Northeastern University's Dan Kennedy, told us by Skype that some news outlets may simply go out of business. Dan, this has been described as the worst week in the history of the nation for alternative weeklies and other small publications that might not survive this. No, that's right. And, you know, for the last 10 years, as the economy was growing, the news business kept shrinking. And we've always known that when the next recession came along, uh, it could be devastating to newspapers and other businesses. And um, it's proved to be, you know, the recession has come all at once. Tell people why they should care about this, because people are thinking, well, in a crisis like this, you know, my first priority is the safety and health of my family or the safety and health of um, first responders and the medical personnel. What difference is this going to make? This is going to make a huge difference because uh, on top of everything else, we need local information, uh, where to go, what to do. Uh, and, and, you know, we're also going to need these news outlets once this is over. And if they're if they die during this terrible period that we're going through right now, um, they're not going to be there when we get back and we need them. Is there also fear that some of these not, not so trustworthy or even purveyors of, you know, bogus news are going to take over because of the fact that real news organizations aren't out there? Well, you know, I haven't heard that fear expressed yet, but it's very real. We've talked a couple of times on Beat the Press about these um, these bogus websites that look like local news outlets that are really outlets for political propaganda. And since their motivation isn't to make money, they're going to do okay. And they'll still be around when this is all over. And yeah, the fear is that uh, not only will there be a lack of reliable information, but there'll be an overflow of unreliable information. So, Dan, the big outlets are going to make it. The New York Times, the Boston Globe, the networks, even local TV. So, I mean, if these alternative weeklies disappear, are communities really going to say, are they going to just say, oh, well, so what? Or are they going to rally together and try to bring them back? Well, first of all, it isn't just the alternative weeklies, although they are in a uniquely bad position. Free papers, free websites, um, you know, they are surviving by advertising, and now the advertising is gone. Uh, but this is true for any small, local, independent news organization. For instance, nonprofits may have their funding lined up for the next few months, but the foundations that they depend on are taking a terrible hit in their endowment. Uh, a number of these organizations are highly dependent on an events business. Yeah. Uh, we know that South by Southwest got canceled. They've kind of kept the Austin Chronicle going for years. And, and so that's been a devastating blow. Texas Tribune is largely supported by events. So no matter what your business model is, this is dealing a terrible blow to your business model. All right, Dan Kennedy, we hope to have you back in studio in not too long a time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we all hope so. Thank you, Emily.